Hello, my name is Red Rose. Thank you for joining me here this evening. I am at St. John's Cemetery, and I'm going to be walking around the cemetery a little bit, and we are going to be talking a little bit about things. It's going to be a very candid video, not scripted at all. I'll begin with a little introduction, and then we will move on to some questions and answers that I will be giving. I uploaded the video a couple days ago about the questions that you can ask. I have a few that I'll be answering. They're very nice questions. And then I might talk about a couple things, a couple things I've been doing, a few things we've been doing as of late on the channel, and a few plans for the near future, especially for the autumnal season, the Halloween season that is here. It is October. As always, the best season of the year, the scary season, the Halloween season, is going to slip through our fingers with great haste. So I am here trying to enjoy as much as I can, trying to make sure each day I'm doing something, something special, special for the season. Because I do love the season. I know everybody, pretty much everybody loves it. I'm here on a supremely gloomy and supremely glorious day to be in a cemetery. It is about 6 p.m. in the evening. It's raining, it's chilly, it's windy. So I might get a bit wet out here, we'll see. But I'll be walking around here. I like to get over to the cemetery a few times a year. I think two years ago for my 13 Nights of Halloween series, I came here and I walked around for about 20 minutes, talked about a few things. But I guess just seeing this, seeing the beauty of, of the graveyard here, this is a historical place. A very nice place to be contemplative. It is quiet, especially with this weather right now. Very conducive to a good funereal mortuary experience amongst the tombstones. The newer tombstones are over here, the older ones are back there. We'll circle around once or twice and we will end over at the older ones because those are my favorites. Just these shots here, these views, I find them spectacular. They're very, very wonderful. With the changing of the leaves into a warmer palette up in the trees here, that's a very nice. It is early autumn, so most of the leaves are still green. But the mixture I find very beautiful. I, I do enjoy that. I think this shot right here is very wonderful. What we see here. And the, the scent, the petrichor of the rain, mixing up the dirt and the grass, and just seeing also the scent, the scent of the decaying leaves is wonderful. It's very great, very great autumnal scent so far. So I guess we'll move into our questions and answers now. It seems like a good time to do that now that we're moving over here. The first one is from Amir Hill, and he asks, Can I see more vampire? That's a good question, and the answer to that question is yes, absolutely. The majority of the videos I upload on the channel have something to do with vampires. Almost every video in my entire collection, in my entire repertoire, has images of the Brides of Dracula from Van Helsing, the absolute best, the, the Halloween Queens, eternal vampires, eternal bloody fangs. I always put those images in the videos at the end, at the beginning. And as we get closer to Halloween, I am going to be uploading more videos that are very particularly, very exclusively, uniquely about them. Other vampires, again, they're pretty much in every video. And especially with this, the encroaching Halloween week, we'll be very vampiric in our videos. And I have been uploading a bit more as of late. So I found a new medium of video to upload. It's just simply narrations of some of the stories I write, short stories, poetry, gothic poetry, very vampiric poetry usually because that the the vampiric motif very prevalent in all of my writing at this point. It's just what I really enjoy and easily inspired when it comes to that. 
So the stories I've uploaded so far, Darkness My Bride, Nightfall from Grace, they do have vampiric motives, vampiric essence, ambiance. That's what I do, so for your question, absolutely you can see more vampires soon on the channel. It would be great to upload more videos about them promptly. As far as that goes, I have one more short story I'm going to be uploading soon, actually tonight, whatever night this is, this is the the 4th of October when I'm recording this. I'm going to be narrating a story entitled The Nightmare, and The Nightmare is a standalone short story, but The, the Nightmare is going to be labeled as a prelude to Nocturnity, portmanteau, nocturnal eternity, inspired by a song that I listen to. It's a good song. I might put it in the comment section if you are interested. Ask me about that. I will put that there. And the Nocturnity is going to be a longer story, about 6,000 words with three parts. It'll be three uploads, each one about 2,000 words. And Nocturnity is going to be absolutely dripping goth, dripping with blood, just as you like it. And it will have the, the vampiric images, the vampiric artwork from the galleries I draw from. If you have any suggestions of other videos, make sure you tell me. I, I abs just as, as with, it is with every YouTuber ever, I adore getting comments on my videos, more than likes, more than subscriptions. I love getting comments, hearing your thoughts on the videos, critiques, accolades, whatever it may be. I really enjoy it. Feedback is extremely instrumental in my making better, higher quality videos for you. On that note, I, as I said in another video, I want to offer up just a, a plenitude of thanks of, of my deep gratitude for the support you have been offering on my channel recently. You've been growing exponentially compared to the past. My first year it took me it took me a whole year to get 20 subscribers and we've gotten close to 70 or 80 subscribers uh, in the last month and a half. Uh, I really, I really tremendously appreciate that. I look forward to seeing where this goes. This this little this spike in growth on the channel certainly has inspired me to upload more frequently, as I've been doing. Uh, but real quickly, back to Nocturnity. It's going to have three parts, as I said. The first one is called Gothic Beauty. And uh, the second one is called Darkly Erotic. And the third one is called Graveyard Girl, which Graveyard Girl is, is pretty crazy. Uh, I'm planning on writing it tonight. I have my notes for it set out, and it's pretty crazy. It, everything uh, falls apart at that point, and I think you'll enjoy that. And some of the, as I said, the motifs associated with that. So, moving on to the next question here from Linda Thetford, who has been extremely supportive of me as of late. I like to say that we've been exchanging comments on my videos, but I would decide to say it out loud here. Thank you very much for your wonderful comments, for watching my videos. Just to know that that support is really, really the reason that I'm making videos right now, inspiring me to keep doing what I'm doing. Linda offered a few suggestions for questions for me to answer. And the first one is, how did you first get into the gothic style of poetry, looks, movies, etc.? And I would say that I have always had a very gothic taste. It was only until recently that I started entertaining 
gothic, darker inclinations for my aesthetics. Uh, but the the appeal has has been ever present. I remember when I was six years old or so, early elementary school. I was in my school's library and and there I just drew I drew a picture of a cemetery. And it wasn't just a cemetery. I had, I had skeleton hands peeking out of the ground, reaching, a, rising from the dead, and it was wonderful. Uh, and my my grandmother and I, we made lots of short stories, lots of drawings with, uh, you know, of the of the Gothic mode. And that really really fostered my appreciation of of tasteful Gothic art and storytelling. The poetry, I only recently started writing poetry, very recent actually. I don't follow the, the pentameter too closely, too well. I, I try to keep it rhyming, I, I do free verse, and I do couplets, quatrains, uh, but mostly I like to do free verse as I have been doing recently on the channel. I think at this point, I actually will turn around here. I'll just go back through here. But getting into the the looks, the looks, the aesthetic, the the fashion, if you will, just wearing dark clothes. I I do wear black. I just I feel good in, in black. Uh, I'm wearing black right now. I have this, and I do have. If I can show it, this spider pendant on my jacket right now. That is recent, that's very recent. I just enjoy it. I, I really do enjoy it. It's a, certainly not to send a message or to make a statement or anything. It's just, as I said, I feel very comfortable in black. Black is universal. You can use it for whatever you want. I like wearing suits. I like wearing coats and things like that. I like wearing gothic jewelry. That's just you know, the way the way I feel comfortable, as I was saying. And that only started about a year and a half ago. I always wanted to do it. It was only very recently that I actually began doing it. I bought uh, I bought a, an overcoat, sort of like a, a duster, and I have a, a shoulder cape. It goes down to about my waist actually, and I got that for I was going to have a, a Halloween party I'm going to actually go go to a Halloween party I don't know if you know where that uh, it was a at a historical location and it was very appropriate for uh, for the setting but I never actually got to do that of course I kept the kept the outfit and I would like to use it in a video if I could I'm not sure exactly how to do that but we'll see and the movies, I have always adored horror movies, and I've, I've always watched them. I've always watched, that's, that goes back as far as I can remember. I think the, the catalyst for horror movies, my watching, probably started with the slasher movies such as Halloween. And uh, really, really one that was instrumental in that was Child's Play, the whole Child's Play series. I used to really, really love Tiffany the Killer Doll. I was just, uh, as they say, you know, love struck by Tiffany. She was so cool. Just the Tiffany the Killer Doll. I really, really liked her. So that's pretty much how that started. In as far as inspiration goes, to finish off that question of hers, inspiration. I've been saying. About a year and a half ago, I began, as I said, entertaining these inclinations. The the catalyst for that really is is quite defined. I can say, is absolutely the first time I saw Van Helsing, and I and I and I saw the Brides of Dracula for for the first time. You know, if we want to throw around the term "love struck," extremely fitting, fitting in that situation, fitting for them. If you watch my videos, you absolutely know how wonderful they are. They are, without a doubt, my muses 
Mareshka, Verona, and Alira, the three brides of Dracula from Van Helsing. So they really inspired me seeing them on the screen. And the thing is, they are they are goth goddesses, and they don't even wear black. And they show that you they can be they can be gothic queens without wearing a touch of black, and it is extremely amazing. So that was the real inspiration for basically everything I'm doing right now at this point. Linda's next question is, what is your favorite place in the world you want to visit and why? I'm immediately inclined to say Romania because of Vlad the Impaler, the Dracula legend, of course, and really Vlad the Impaler. Vlad the Impaler is a legend himself. He is the legend himself. Vlad the Impaler is amazing. And while some of the you know stories about him paint him as extremely brutal, extremely cruel, he is a he is a Romanian national hero to be admired because he was a defender of the Christian faith against the the fast the fast encroaching Ottoman Turks under uh, Sultan Mehmed II, his his brother Radu betrayed him, left him to his own, and sided with the Sultan. And it was up to Vlad the Impaler, Vlad the Third Dracula, to defend defend Valachia as voivode of Valachia. And take a quick break here. I want to show you this. The best, the best tombs, the best gravestones, headstones in the whole cemetery right before you here, at least in my opinion. This right here, this is, this is beyond gothic. I mean, this is gothic supremacy right here. The angel, the, the weathered face of the angel. Absolutely. The cross here. These are, and these are very old. As I said, this is the oldest, the oldest portion of the cemetery. Also here, you see, see over time, the erosion and just the, the weather and the veiny look in this rock here. Uh, limestone, granite, marble. Just, it's excellent. It's just excellent. And back to what I was saying, yes, I would love to go to Romania, I would love to go to Transylvania. I'd love to go where Valachia was, see the Danube River. I would love to see the Carpathians, the you know, glorious funereal Carpathia. Wonderful. But really, I'm though I'm really inclined to say that, I am actually resolute in my choice when I say that Italy is actually my the place I would want to go most. One, visit Rome, Vatican City across the Tiber. It is the seat of Catholicism, of course, Roman Catholicism. Being a Catholic, I would love to see it, love to see, love to see all the churches there, the wonderful churches, the history, living history. Also, Florence, Venice, wonderful places. I would love to see these. It's it's highest on my list. Uh, 100%. I can I can say with absolute certainty that that Italy is where I'd want to go. Uh, I love to see Abruzzo and the more the more countryside parts of Italy, and I love to see the cities, the the Venetian waterways, the canals, of course, and. The, the very, you know, the Renaissance artwork and architecture in Florence. That Italy is where I would want to go most. So that is that answer. And Linda says, and lastly, how did you come up with the Red Rose as your name? It fits wonderfully, and how did the dark and stormy elegance part play in? And she says, I love the whole aesthetic of your personality. So I'm deeply curious to know what turns your brain gears. Let's point this out real fast, that's lovely. Well, what she means by the dark and stormy elegance part is a little a little thing I put in the conclusion of my descriptions, my videos. And I don't have that in there anymore because I like to think that the videos themselves should give somebody that impression. 
And I find that your own work, your own something. artwork, your own projects, as having an air of elegance, I find that to be a bit pompous. And I want to stay away from that, so I, I don't put it in my descriptions anymore. But I do include those motifs in my videos. And in, of course, in my whole life and the rest of my life. And for the name Red Rose, the re that's a good question, Red Rose. Uh, it all started, the whole rose, talking about motifs a lot, the whole rose motif started 2015 or so. We have a fresh, fresh grave here. We won't walk on top of this grave, but look at it. But anyway, it started in 2015 when I chose the name Black Rose for my channel. I had a little channel. Uh, actually, my the first name for that channel was Rain. R-A-I-N-E. I changed it to Black Rose. I, roses are my favorite flowers, without a doubt. It's this classic, you know, with a red rose. Passionate perfection in blood red. Honestly, a bouquet of red roses. Maybe a splash of white from other flowers within them. Uh, spectacular. I actually do have... I got some some fake flowers recently to beautify my Marian shrine a bit, and I'm going to use my powers of biolocation to bring you there right now so you can see them. All right, now that we're back in the cemetery, Black Rose exemplified, I guess, the person I was back then. Uh, I was I was young. I was about 12, 13 then. Somewhat brooding, very monotone. And Black Rose, that somber, gloomy feel. And while the dignity of that somber and gloomy feeling that the Black Rose might evoke cannot be understated, I was... I can look back confidently and say I was a bit cringeworthy back in those days. I saw some of my old video files from them and I was not pleased. So around 2016, when I made Red Rose four years ago, I changed it to Red Rose because I wanted a sort of revival in my image. Quickly take a look. Here, this is the, the graveyard, the cemetery. Here we have the columbarium, where the cremated remains of the deceased are put to rest. And we'll move back. I just wanted to show that real fast, but we'll move back. I found that the red rose was a little more vivacious and that I wanted to be a bit more engaging in my videos and change that a bit. And so red rose was natural. Back then, I was not extremely interested in, in vampires. So of course the red rose, especially dark red roses, they're very, you know, they're, they look bloody, they look sanguine. It's wonderful. And they're perfect now. Uh, call it providential that I chose the name Red Rose if it's such a, such a, a vampiric ambiance, as I said, that I only later, you know, post hoc adopted but I chose it, I really just wanted to change it, I, I thought the Red Rose super beautiful. You can actually watch that video back. This is my very first video I ever made, and it is about, it, it goes into that just a bit. It goes into uh, my, you know, the, when I was still, you know, Nate, Red Rose was still a, a nascent channel, of course, my first video. I, I got into that just a bit. It's just a text on screen video, it's nothing special. Um, but you can watch that back, if you like. So that is about that is about the end of the questions. I've been talking for a little while. I have a couple more things to talk about. I do appreciate those of you who ask questions. Again, if you have anything to say, please comment. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear from all of you, my subscribers. The last thing I want to talk about is the whole, the whole gothic feel itself. Which of course comes alive most, most drastically, most you know, expressively. You know, it is to be expressed most fully in this Halloween season. I want to talk about the, you know, the types, 
types of Gothic artwork and the Gothic, the Gothic motives. So in my opinion, there are two types. There's cold goth and there's warm goth. Say cold goth can be identified most with, with death, the concept of death. And warm goth may be mostly the concept of blood. And that's probably all I need to say about that, but I'll, get, I'll elaborate just a bit. With cold goth, it's, it's cemeteries and it's, it's funerals. You know, the, you know, the funereal obsequies and these, and these gravestones, these weathered gravestones on a, on a gloomy, you know, a gloomy overcast, you know, dour day. It's raining, it's, it's windy, the trees, you know, the grim reaper, the grim reaper at castles, churches, ghosts, church bells, absolutely resonant, you know, reverberating church bells in the cemetery. The funeral in the distance, everybody wearing their black suits and veils and dresses, flowery black dresses. Gargoyles, statues, that's cold goth for me. Warm goth is is pretty far from that as a matter of fact. I, warm goth, I want to talk, I say it's, it has to do with blood, it has to do with vampires, flowers, perfumes. The, the harpsichord. The harpsichord is a stellar instrument that is, goes great with a warm goth palette, warm goth uh, motifs. And what else? What else is what else is warm goth? It's it's, it's very vampiric, and you know vampirism is an extensive subject itself, of course. And warm goth is what I stick with most. It was not always the case, but again, when I met the brides of Dracula back. On July 11th, 2018, the night thereof, I fell in love with the warm, the warm goth essence, as I'm electing to call it right now. Uh, so we're getting to the end of the video. I'm actually just going to walk right back to where I was and end it with the uh, darkest tombstones. But I want to talk about that, and I want to say, yes, I do stick with the warm goth mostly now. That is where I'm at primarily with the poetry, with the stories, but I love cold goth and I want to give it its recognition best as I can as well, and I plan on making some colder goth stories soon, I'll have to upload some, I'll just stand here for a second to take a look at what we have here, obviously the camera could never do this justice, right? This sublime overcast day. The breeze, the breeze in these trees, pendulously swinging branches. It is wonderful. I want the rain out here too. I've never been out here in the rain this winter. I'd love to come back in the snow and talk some more. It'd be quite lovely to be out here in the snow. Uh, the, the battery in my camera is dying, so we will conclude this with a sort of paste. But nocturnity. The, the story, the little collection of stories, in fact, the, the three parts, is very, is very warm goth. It's all vampiric, all about, all about the blood. And if, like I said, if you would like me to do something more cold goth, which is pro it's more traditional, without a doubt more traditional, when you think about goth, cold goth actually, without a doubt, comes to mind first. No, it, uh, that is indubitable. In fact, like when I think about when I think about Gothic artwork and everything, it's all about this sort of stuff. Gothic churches. So yeah, I would like to do more of that. I'll let this pass by. I would like to do more of that in the future. And I am very excited to get this uh, collection of short stories, Nocturnity, out soon. I have a whole other one planned out about Elizabeth Bathory, which I'm, I, which I'm going to do somewhat, you know, shortly thereafter. But yeah, that is about it for this video. I've enjoyed walking around here and talking a bit, answering your lovely questions. If you have any, if you have any more questions, feel free to ask, and I'll answer them in the comments. So we just come to the end of this video, admiring the cemetery here. It's a wonderful cemetery. There's another cemetery which is close by, which I could go to soon. Hope to see how this video does. Uh, closing statement, as I said earlier, uh, Graveyard Girl, the third 
the third part of Nocturnity is it's actually it's it's a bit experimental. I am going to attempt to be blending the cold goth with the warm goth and this and see what happens. It takes part as you might expect in a cemetery, but our graveyard girl is a vampiress, and we'll see how it goes. See how it goes. When it comes closer to Halloween, I'm going to be uploading some videos, as I said, all about the brides of Dracula. I want to upload another video about them exclusively. Those videos do the best on my channel, and I'm very pleased about that. There's one video you should be watching on my channel. It is, uh, is She's a Vampire, about Alira, Alira Dracula, from Van Helsing. That video is doing really well on my channel. It's garnered me a lot of subscribers, and it has fostered inspiration to continue uploading those types of videos has 11,000 plus views, 100 plus likes. My average video gets 50 to 100 views. So people love it, people love them, and I could not be happier to say, you know, people love The Brides of Dracula. So that is what I will be uploading. It is great when what you want to upload is what people want to see. So we end here with this wonderful shot here, just again, these beautiful, beautiful graves. I do hope that in my talking, I was able to get enough enough shots of the of the graves instead of pointing at the ground absent-mindedly as I was speaking. But we see this. There's one over here I'd like to show. There is a headless angel over here, which I would like to end the video on. This, of course, also. This right here is amazing. This is just a traditional. Uh, gravestone. This is so traditional. It's so simple. It's so basic. It has moss on it. It's super weathered. It's perfect. It's perfect. But here, here is our decapitated angel. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. I'm not sure what happened to him. But he has been found headless. I want to thank you very much for watching this video and for watching all of my videos, for giving me any support that you do. I appreciate it tremendously. You are a phenomenal group watching this channel, and I hope to do more as we continue growing. Again, always, any suggestions, please leave them, and I will get to it. I'd love to heed your advice and act promptly on your suggestions. It's, it's wonderful. So we end here with a shot. I've been going for a while. Maybe a bit longer than I should have. But it is wonderful. I'll be back here when it's snowing in the winter. We'll talk some more. And I will be seeing you very soon. Be uploading the Nightmare video soon, the Prelude. My name is Red Rose, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.